Today, I cover weeks 9 through 11 of my cutting phase, coached by Paul Ravella. Alright, there's a lot to cover today because a lot has happened in the last few weeks, including some mental struggles from this guy. When we last left off at the end of week 8, I had talked about how weight loss had started to slow, and Paul made some adjustments, bringing my calories down on average by about 93 calories, as well as increasing my cardio by 25 minutes for the week. I also talked about how I was dealing with an abdominal strain, which for the most part is finally healed up now, but it took literally about a month to get there, and I still feel it just a little bit, but thankfully, we're getting there. As far as the diet goes, week 9 went pretty well. I lost an average of 0.7 pounds after doing a pretty good job of sticking to my macros for the week, which included the newly added refeed day on top of my training and non-training day macros. So Paul took a look at things and decided that we were just going to keep things going, especially since we had previously just made a change. We'd go ahead and ride things out a little bit longer and see how it goes. Then as we move on to week 10, again, things went pretty well as far as macros go, but this is also when I started to struggle a little bit more with the mental side of things. One of the things I mentioned in the last update was I was not sleeping very well, and that has continued to be the trend. So I'm only getting about maybe five and a half to six hours tops most nights as my body just wakes up and I'm just up for the day. And as you probably know for yourself, when fatigue gets high and you're not resting very well, you start to kind of feel a little bit down and you don't feel as motivated to do things, and it can kind of have this carryover or this trickle effect into everything else. I think I also started to think a little bit too much about how much longer I have to go with this thing, and this is one of the downsides of taking a slower cut, which is what I've talked about previously, how there's positives and negatives to slower and faster cuts. So the positive for the slower cut, especially for me, who is someone who's trying to get on the bodybuilding stage and doesn't have a lot of muscle by bodybuilding standards, is that we're going to be able to maintain more muscle mass going through the process. But on the flip side of things, it can really start to drag on when you diet for a long time. And after 10 weeks of dieting, knowing I still have 18 more weeks to go, and I'm knowing I'm already pretty lean and feeling the effects of that, kind of had me a little concerned. Honestly though, I think the bigger thing, which is something I talked about on my Instagram recently, is that I just wasn't really committed committed to one style of dieting for this. And I was caught going back and forth between feeling like I should be more flexible and I should be more accurate or on top of things because it's show prep. And I think this is a really good thing to talk about because this is something that a lot of people struggle with, whether you're in prep or just a regular cut. And that's being caught between feeling like you should be more flexible or be more on top of things. The problem is if you don't really commit to any certain style and what you want to do, you kind of get caught in between and you just kind of always feel like no matter what you do, it isn't the right thing. I mean, think about it this way. If you feel like you should be more flexible and include more fun foods in your diet and you should go out more and do a little bit more drinking and things like that, then you feel bad about it and feel like you should be more accurate. On the flip side, you also feel like, hey, I should be more diligent, I should be more on top of things, and I shouldn't be more flexible because it's time to go, then no matter what you do, you can't win. If you be more flexible, you feel like you should be more accurate. If you be more accurate, you feel like you should be more flexible, and no matter what you do, you feel bad about it and you're unhappy. And this is kind of where I have found myself recently. On one hand, I know that I can diet successfully and be flexible and go out to eat with my family and have a couple drinks and just be fine and, and not worry about really being on top of things and have success. But on the other hand, I also feel like, hey, this is show prep. I should be doing every little thing that I can to get the best possible results. And it's left me teetering back and forth between the two and feeling pretty unhappy with things. So what I realized that I really needed to do was pick what I wanted to do and 100% commit to that. Meaning if I decided, hey, like I'm not going to be flexible at all, I'm going to be all in on this show prep and be as diligent as possible, then great. Like I'll be happy with that because I'm committed to that. Or if I say, hey, I still want to have balance. I still want to be able to enjoy things. I want to have a good family and friend life and be able to mix the two together. I can do that and I'll be happy doing that as long as I commit to that. But if I stay in this area feeling like I should do one or the other, no matter what I do, I'm always going to lose. So what I personally decided to do was go ahead and just be okay with being more flexible and eating out if I want to and having some drinks if I want to and just kind of enjoying life but still hitting my macros. I know I'll be fine. And honestly, for me, like bodybuilding isn't life. This is something that I want to try. I want to see what it's like and see if it's for me. But it's not like my big passion. It's not what drives me. So I want to make sure that I have a, a decent balance that I enjoy and I'm happy with. Because right now, I just haven't been that happy and I don't like that. I'm all about being happy. 
And for me, this is how I think I will be the happiest. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm still going to hit my macros. I'm still going to be really diligent. I'm still going to work hard and I'm still going to get results. I know I will. I'm just not going to be totally 100% super dialed in. Once I get to maybe around eight weeks out or so, as it gets closer, then I'll flip the switch and I'll just go all in and I'll punt some of the, the more leisurely stuff to the side. But for now, I need to do this for myself and I think I'll be happiest in the long run by doing that. But once again, I got ahead of myself. So I lost 0.5 pounds on average during week 10. So going into week 11, Paul said, hey, things are slowing down a little bit. Let's try to stay ahead of it. And he made some more changes. And what he did this time was he got away from the training day and non-training day macros with the refeed and just gave me five straight days of lower calories followed by two straight days of higher calories. And my guess would be this is because once you do two straight days in a row of higher calories, this is when you start to see some of the more hormonal and metabolic benefits that come from a refeed. So he set my new macros to five days of 200 grams of protein, 250 grams of carbs, and 65 grams of fat. And my high day macros are 190 grams of protein, 340 grams of carbs, and 60 grams of fat. Now these changes, as you look at the average for the week, would be like a reduction of 96 calories per day. And he also increased my cardio by five minutes each session, five sessions during the week. So I went from 100 minutes per week to 125 minutes for the week. Now starting the week was just fine for me. I had a couple days, hit my macros just fine, but then I ended up going to Chicago as planned. And I was actually there with Paul and my friends Lauren and Steven and some other people. And we were there for NPC Junior Nationals. And hey, if there's ever a group of people that are gonna understand sticking to your macros while traveling, it's gonna be the group of people that I was with. They were all competitors. But for me, I was really starting to struggle with going on the road, being in one of my favorite cities, just trying to hit macros, not going out to eat and, and enjoying things as much, and just feeling like I should really be on top of things. And I really kind of had some mental struggles. We had an Airbnb, so I was able to go to the grocery store and stock up on the things that I needed. And I was able to prepare my own meals and things like that. So hitting my macros wasn't really a big deal, but again, it was just kind of the social situations that was kind of tough for me especially since I was really the only one there that was actually in prep it wasn't easy but I was pretty good Thursday through Saturday all right I still went out with them most of the time and like they'd go to breakfast and I'd go and get a coffee they went out for dinner and I'd go with and maybe even have a drink but just work it into my macros and just make sure that I'm doing well for the rest of the day but when Sunday came around, this is when I was like, okay, I don't know what I want to do here. Sunday was the day where everyone was planning out and really kind of letting loose and having a good time, exploring Chicago, going around, having drinks, going to different restaurants and things like that. And even though I had a high day, I wasn't really sure how I wanted to handle this. I ended up talking to Paul in the morning and I'm like, listen, like, I think I would really like to just kind of enjoy this day, have a handful of drinks and just have a good time. You know, I'll, I'll still make sure I'm tracking everything and make sure that I'm staying pretty good with my calories and everything. But you let me know, like if you think at this point it's better that I really stay on top of things and just be good, then I'll do that. If you're okay with me going around and having fun and, and not being too diligent, great, you know, let me know. Basically what he ended up telling me was, hey, both Laura and I did this during prep and we, we had some drinks and things like that and everything was fine. We'll get a lot of activity and we'll be walking around and stuff. Well, you should be just fine. So I went ahead and gave myself the okay to have a little bit more fun on that day. I'll be honest, I drank a little bit more than I intended on. And uh, you know, that's one of the dangers about drinking is it does kind of lower the Fs that you're gonna give for the day, right? So things got away from me a little bit, but not too much. I still continued to track. Uh, I decided at the end of the day, even though I didn't have enough calories for it, I still had some, some gluten-free pizza that was there and it was phenomenal. And um, you know, I had, I don't even know how many drinks, but it was more than I should have. And for the day, I basically ended up about 400 calories over and was well short on protein, but man, it was a fun day. And the next day was us traveling home anyway, so I knew I was gonna be on the flight and there's gonna be a lot of traveling and I wasn't gonna have a lot of time and it's really hard to eat a gluten-free diet, which if you don't know, I do gluten-free because I have an intolerance to it, so I stay away from it. There's nothing bad about gluten, it's just for me, I don't tolerate it well. But when you're traveling, there's not a lot of options, especially for carbs, so I knew it was gonna be easy for me to eat less. So what we basically did was say, okay, let's just make up those calories that you went over the day before. And on that day, I just took away about 400 calories and even things out. And much to my surprise, when I woke up and went on the scale on Tuesday morning, I was actually down a couple pounds from before I left. And actually, if you look at the week as a whole, even though it's a shortened week, I was still down 1.1 pounds from the previous week. So it really goes to show, like just one day cannot make or break anything. And we need to just always remember that it's about balance and that you don't have to be perfect. And even in something like show prep, you can have a little bit of fun. And I, I needed to remind myself of that because I, I've been having some issues with that. And that's 
that's just not me. Like I've had such a great relationship with food for quite a while now. I think I let show prep kind of get to me a little bit and uh, kind of put me back into some old habits that haven't been around for many years. So anyway, all is fine now. I had a little revelation and I'm excited about it. It put me in a much better mood. Like I came home, I actually had this conversation with myself in the gym and I came home in the best mood I've been in a long time because I'm now committed to a certain style that I'm gonna do. And this is something I talk about quite a bit with like my clients. When I tell people that you need to commit to what you're doing or you need to be all in, that doesn't mean you punt everything else from your life and that nothing else but fitness matters, it means that you need to be all in on what you want to do. And like for me, I need to be all in on being more flexible. As, as weird as that probably sounds, it just is really gonna help me enjoy the process a lot better. And it's gonna be well time for me as well because in about a week here, I'm actually turning 40 years old. So going to the beach with some friends and then we've got July 4th, it's gonna be a few days after that. So I'm gonna be practicing some of this flexibility but I'll still stay on my plan. I'll still hit my macros. I'm just going to have to sacrifice some food for some drinks and things like that, but it'll be good and I'm looking forward to it and uh, I'm grateful to be in a better spot mentally now. Anyway, with that being said, with weight being down, even with the travel and everything, obviously Paul said, let's just keep going with things and keep doing what we're doing. So no changes for this week. However, I am really tired this week after all the travel and the shenanigans and dieting, being at the end of a training block so fatigue is high, I'm pretty wiped out right now. So I'm looking forward to getting this deload here and hopefully potentially a diet break here soon as well. Speaking of diet breaks, I've been getting a lot of questions lately about how to set up diet breaks and how to increase calories and all the things that go on with the diet break, including when you should take them. So make sure you check out this video where I talk about how to set up your diet breaks, how to adjust your calories, when you should do them, and everything you need to know. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.